born in 1863 in Dearborn, Michigan, and was the first of six children. From an early age, he displayed more interest in mechanical things than in work around the family farm. He left home in 1879 at age 16 for Detroit to work there as an apprentice mechanist, which ended after three years, and he then returned home. He spent the next few years picking up jobs in factories as well as operating on and repairing steam engines and working on the family farm. After he married Clara Bryant in 1888, he ran a sawmill for income for his family. His only son was Edsel Bryant Ford. In 1891, Ford became an engineer for the Edison Illuminating Company in Detroit. Soon, he was promoted to chief engineer, which gave him more time to work on his own personal experiments. In 1896, Ford finished the Quadricycle, a four-wheeled, self-propelled vehicle powered by gas and steered by a tiller, somewhat like a boat. It had just two forward speeds and no reverse. Ford was not the first to invent such a self-propelled vehicle, but was only one of many pioneering this new technology. After two unsuccessful attempts to establish a company, Ford was finally able to organize the Henry Ford Company in 1901 with himself as engineer. However, he resigned only a year later due to a dispute with the company's bankers. The Henry Ford Company went on to later become the Cadillac Motor Car Company. In 1903, Ford Motor Company was officially incorporated and the very first Model A appeared on the market in Detroit. They began by only making a few cars a day. In 1908, the Model T had begun manufacturing, and by 1910, Ford began operations from his factory in Highland Park, Michigan. 1913 marked a significant turn of events in that the first moving assembly line was introduced in Ford's factories. With these new efficient methods of production, Ford was eventually able to cut production time for a car from over 12 hours to having one rolling off the line every two minutes, and even down to every 24 seconds. The introduction of the assembly line revolutionized factory productivity, not only for Ford, but for many manufacturers, even still today. Ford changed his workers' hours from nine hours a day to eight, and offered them the substantial pay of five dollars a day. However, as good as he was to his workers, Ford was a strong opponent of unionizing labor forces and was the last auto manufacturer to unionize his workers. In 1919, his son Edsel was named president of the Ford Motor Company, and by 1921, Ford was dominating the automobile market, producing 55% of the industry's total output. The Ford Company mobilized its factories during World War II to produce vehicles for the Army. Ford also held a keen interest in airplane technology and saw to it that the company got involved in the production of planes. He himself invented the tri-motor plane in 1926. The famous Model T, which sold in 1908 for an affordable $950 and came, as Ford himself put it, in any color so long as it's black, saw its end in 1927, when it was replaced by the Model A. His son Edsel died at age 49 in 1943, and just three years later in 1947, Henry Ford passed away at age 83 at Fairlane, his Dearborn home in Michigan. Besides the Ford Motor Company, Ford's other greatest legacy is the Ford Foundation, established in 1936 and chartered by his son Edsel and two other company executives. The purpose of the foundation is, quote, to receive and administer funds for scientific, educational, and charitable purposes, all for the public welfare. The Ford Foundation has supported such establishments as the Public Broadcasting Service, Children's Education Workshop, and Planned Parenthood. The foundation still exists today and notably provides scholarships for poor communities outside of the United States for people to attend universities anywhere in the world. The Ford Motor Vehicle was accessible, affordable, and produced using revolutionary assembly lines in Henry Ford's factories and has now become both an icon and a daily necessity to many. Henry Ford was an innovator and a real captain of industry, and his work still thrives even today. My regards to old Broadway and say that I'll be there ere long. Keep 
Oh,